Hello everyone, welcome back. We were doing basic concepts in geometry in that practice set 1.1. We had completed till sum number 5. Let's start with sum number 6. Read the question. Sketch proper figure and write answers of the following questions. Sketch proper figure. So we'll draw, we have to draw the figure according to the given condition. Okay, copy the condition. If A dash B dash C, so A dash B dash C, A dash B dash C means point B is coming between A and C. And length of AC is 11, length of AC is equal to 11. Then we have length of BC is equal to 6.5. Find, then find length of AB. This is the question. Okay. Very simple. Let's start. A dash B dash C. So first you draw proper figure. A and then B and then C. Okay. So A dash B dash C. AC is given as 11. Now according to the figure, solution, random solution. According to the figure, what can you say about the betweenness property? That is, I can say length of AB plus length of BC, length of AB plus length of BC is equal to length of, total length will be AC. Clear? Now, add, add the length, length of AB plus length of BC is given as 6.5 equal to length of AC also we know 11. So what will be length of AB? Length of AB is equal to 11 minus 6.5 therefore length of AB is equal to therefore length of AB will be 4.5 highlight it that's it over for some now, sum number 2, similarly we will solve. If R dash S dash T, so first draw the figure. R dash S dash T. Okay? S T is given, length of R S is given, find R T. Look at the figure and write down the lengths, sum of the lengths, that is length of R S. You can put a comma, even if you don't put comma, no problem. Length between or the distance between R comma S plus length or distance between S comma T is equal to length between first and second point, second and third point will be equal to first and the third R comma T. Substitute the values now. Here if you want you can write the reason as R dash S dash T. From this relation you got this condition. Okay. So, from this also we can frame, no, without drawing the figure. But they have asked us to draw the figure. So, we will draw the figure. From this condition also you can write RS plus ST is equal to RT. RS plus ST is equal to RT. Now, substitute the values. RS we know it is 2.5 plus ST we know 3.7 is also given which is equal to length of RT. They have not used a comma, so no, there is no need to put comma. Even if you put comma, no problem. Therefore, 2.5 plus 3.7 will be 7 plus 5, 12, carry 1, 5, 6. 6.2 is equal to length of RT. Write it this way. Length of RT is equal to 6.2. And put it in a box. Okay? Moving on. X dash, Y dash, Z. So, figure x dash, y dash, z. Write down the condition. Length of x, y plus first and second, second and third, y, z is equal to length of first and third point, x, z. Correct? Same way you also wrote? Okay. Now look at the given details and substitute. Don't be scared of this root. Very simple to solve. Huh? x, y, we know it is root 7. Okay. Plus length of y, z, we have to find 
is equal to length of xz is 3 root 7. Now this will keep as it is. Root 7 will go to opposite side. So length of yz is equal to 3 root 7 minus root 7. Okay. Now here both root 7 root 7. So let us take common. Root 7 will take common. Root 7 I took common. Root 7, root 7, root 7 I took common. So from here, if root 7 is removed, we get 3 minus root 7 went. So it will remain, nothing means 1. Okay. Now 3 minus 1 is equal to 2 root 7. So you, so you got length of y7 as 2 root 7. Okay. Okay. Now we have the last sum. Which figure is formed by three non-collinear points? Very simple. If you have three non-collinear points. Non-collinear points means points which do not lie on the same line. So if you have three non-collinear points, which figure join? Which figure is formed? You get a triangle. So straight away write down the answer. A triangle is formed by three non-collinear points. Okay, so we have completed practice at 1.1. Now let us go on to some basic terms again. That is, in page number 6, they have given about line segment. Line segment we have discussed earlier. What is line segment? Line segment, it has a definite length, you know, the length is fixed. Now, you have learned about sets in maths 1. So, they have used that concept of sets here. And explain the line segment as line segment means if you have a line segment like this, it is the union. Union means together. It is the union of point A, B, and all the points between A and B. Okay? It is the union of points A and B, points A and B, and all the points which are lying between A and B together makes a segment. Okay, ah. then when you write about a segment, you will write segment AB. If you are writing about length, you will write length AB is equal to whatever length. Okay, next we have ray AB. A and B are two distinct points. The union set of all points on segment AB and the points P such that A dash B dash P is called ray AB. Here point A is called the end point of ray AB. How will you explain ray AB? Ray AB will be drawn this way. AB. Only in this figure where A is the end point. This point is called as the end point. So ray AB will always be, a ray will always be named from the end point. Next in the textbook they have mentioned about line. Now line they have explained it this way. Line is a union of, it is a union of ray AB. So, ray AB means I will start from A and this much. See, I have highlighted from A to this much. Now, and its opposite ray, which is the opposite ray of AB. Opposite ray of AB, if AB is in this direction, then the opposite ray will be in this direction. Huh? So, opposite of AB is from B you have to start, BA. These two together, if you join, you get line AB. Okay? It's, it's mentioned like that. You don't take much tension. Only you should know what is a line. It has no fixed length. Extends from both the ends. Okay. Moving ahead, then they have mentioned about congruent segment. Now this you have to know. What are congruent segments? Any two segments whose length are equal. Uh, yeah, this is looking like congruent segments. Yes. Suppose this is XY and this is LM. Any two segments whose length are equal are called as congruent segments. How will you write it? Segment XY congruent to, this is called as equal. Congruent sign equal to your sign you will put and from down you will put the sign like this. Okay? I have seen many students doing it the other way, which is wrong. 
Okay, congruent sign is from down to up. Segment XY congruent to segment LM. This way, you will denote congruent segments. What are congruent segments? Segments which are equal in length are called congruent segments. This is a very important topic. I want you to mention this in your book. Okay, this is called as properties of congruent segments. You have to remember the properties of congruent segments. If two segments are congruent, then they will follow these properties. For your easiness, I will give you a clue. The properties are RST properties. Na? Easy to remember, no? LMNOPQ, RST. So, RST rule. What is that RST rule? R stands for reflexivity. Reflexivity. Reflexivity from the name itself. When you stand in front of a mirror, you see your reflection. Same like that, if I have a segment, every segment will be congruent to itself. Segment AB will be congruent to segment AB. Every segment congruent to itself. This property is called as reflexivity. Like that, I have taken the segment AB, you can select any names. Property of re reflexivity is clear. Hmm. Now we go on to the Second property, second property is S, starting with S, symmetry, okay, symmetry, this property is called as symmetry, again very easy to understand, symmetry means if I have two segments which are congruent, suppose segment AB congruent to segment PQ, if these two segments are congruent, then I can also write it this way, that is, Segment PQ congruent to segment AB. Symmetry. Now let us talk about the third property which is called as transitivity. Transitivity means in reflexivity one segment congruent to itself. In symmetry one segment congruent to the second. Second will also be congruent to the first. Now in transitivity T for 3. We will be talking about 3 segments. Example, suppose let us consider segment AB congruent to segment PQ. Huh? And one more condition, segment PQ congruent to segment LM. Segment AB congruent to PQ, but PQ is congruent to LM. So, can I say that segment AB is congruent to LM? Therefore, segment AB congruent to segment LM. This property is called as property of transitivity. First segment congruent to second. Second segment is congruent to a third segment. Then the first and third will be congruent. Then, okay. So, these three properties of congruent segments you have to remember. Same thing you can apply for congruent angles also. Think about the first property, reflexivity. Angle A will be congruent to itself. Angle A congruent to angle A. Second property, symmetry. If angle B is congruent to angle A, then angle A will be congruent to angle B. Transitivity will be angle A is congruent to angle B. Angle B is congruent to angle C. So, angle A and angle C both will be congruent. Easy, no? Ah. So, this you have to mention it in your book with example. Okay? Ah. Now, the midpoint of a segment. Midpoint of a segment. I have a segment. Suppose, I will name it as uh, PQ. If I have the R as the midpoint, R is the midpoint of segment PQ. How will I write it? P dash R dash Q. By writing P dash R dash Q, this doesn't mean that R is the midpoint. This gives us the meaning that, what is the meaning conveyed? That R is between P and Q. How will you show that R is the midpoint? For this you have to write length of PR is equal to length of RQ. If I give this condition, length of PR is equal to length of RQ, then I can say that R is the midpoint of segment PQ. 
Okay. Therefore, point R is the midpoint of midpoint of segment PQ. More thing you can show here. If PR is equal to RQ, I can also write this as if PR is equal to RQ, I can also write this as half of PQ. No. So PR RQ will be half of PQ. If R is the midpoint, then I can say that PR or RQ will be half of the whole segment PQ. We completed practice at 1.1 and then we saw few more concepts regarding geometry, regarding the congruent segments, how to write midpoint. Okay. And now in the coming next class, we will be solving practice at 1.2. Till then, you should be thorough with practice at 1.1. Okay, till we meet for the next time. Bye. Thank you.